Hey, it's Larry the Tractor Guy. Got a call uh, with a customer on a 9510R that's got some exhaust regen codes. And uh, I've talked to him a couple different times and went out and looked at the tractor once and then came back and ordered an air throttle valve. I've seen this issue before with the air throttle valve on 9510R. And uh, so we're gonna go out and put the, install this air throttle valve and see if we can run a quick uh, service regen and see how it works out. So I'll see you in a bit. So we're looking at this air throttle valve, which is right here. Has a wiring connector here. And this is the after treatment or I guess regen codes that we're getting caused by this air throttle valve while this tractor is trying to run through an exhaust clean cycle. Seen this problem before and normally the problem is with the electronic portion of this valve and uh, sometimes the butterfly that's inside of this valve can uh, start kind of sticking a little bit and cause some after treatment codes and so we're going to go ahead and uh, continue on with replacing this uh, air throttle valve. First thing we want to do is disconnect this connector from the valve disconnect this air pipe flange loose from this clamp okay now we'll have to remove these four cap screws uh, to remove the air throttle valve There is our air throttle valve, possibly the cause of our exhaust clean code. So I have a new one on the truck. We're gonna grab that and uh, replace this air throttle valve. Okay, there's our new air throttle valve, nice and tight um, butterfly and new sensor. Put that in place like so. We'll go ahead and put our air pipe in place, even though we don't have the bolts tight yet. If you can kind of see underneath here, there is a kind of a support bracket. And so I'm going to kind of loosely uh, install those bolts to kind of hold that in place until we tighten these four cap screws that actually hold the air throttle valve in place. As you can see, this support bracket is fairly loose. Um, it has quite a bit larger holes than the actual bolts so that you can adjust the support bracket. And I've seen this a few times where an air throttle valve has continued to give issues. And what I've found, a few times I've found this, that the support bracket was tightened up tight prior to installing the four cap screws that actually hold the air throttle valve on. And the air throttle valve is an aluminum housing. And so if it gets in a bind, if you tighten this support bracket up first and put the air throttle valve in a bind, you won't know that until it actually tries to close or open and then it sticks. And some of those sticking issues can be caused from not following the proper procedure of installing and tightening up the air throttle valve. So I'm just gonna kinda run those bolts up somewhat loose. Then I'm gonna get my 13 millimeter wrench and then I'm gonna draw those mounting bolts of the air throttle valve up pretty evenly try to keep that from having any binding issues okay so now we can tighten up our support bracket 
Okay, go ahead and install our air pot. Plug in our temperature sensor. All right, so now we've got the air throttle valve installed and we're going to hook up service advisor and see if we can run a service regen uh, exhaust clean and make sure that uh, everything works out the way that it's supposed to I've got my edl hooked up I've got service advisor on live connection going pulled up the regeneration abort source identification test within service advisor it looks like that 27 29.090 air throttle valve position invalid. I'm pretty sure that's probably what's causing our regen issues. And so we're going to uh, initiate an exhaust clean and pull up some data points to monitor that to see what the soot load is. The original complaint was the customer was having to stop and initiate a parked regen multiple times in the field while plowing. So we've got our EDL connected to the service advisor port on the tractor. We're going to initiate a service regen. We're going to go to diagnostics. We've got multiple codes. We're going to go to test. And I want to look at the last codes generated we want to look at regeneration abort source identification test. We want to run that test real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this test will display the causes of the last five aborted DPF regenerations. So I'm going to click OK. Okay, there's one that ignition was switched off during regeneration. And then we've got um, DPF active regeneration not allowed. Got another ignition was switched off during regeneration and if you look at logs the hours of the fault also so the one that i'm actually concerned with is this air throttle valve position invalid i believe that's what's causing our regeneration problems i've seen this multiple times on machines where if it doesn't know exactly where that air throttle valve is that during a auto regeneration in the field, then it will cancel that regeneration. And then also it will cause the customer to have to stop and derate the power and cause it to go into a parked regen state. And I believe that's what it was doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit no here. And we're gonna go ahead and probably see what it'll do here go and see if we can initiate a service regen click on OK as you can hear the tractor throttled up on its own so now we've initiated a service regen I found out an easy way if you click on the the actual regeneration you can drag that over and basically collect all of those data points at one time and as you can see the first thing on the list is the air throttle valve actual and desired position and then we want to go down and look at the temperatures I always like to look at the DOC outlet the DOC inlet and outlet temperatures to see what they are during regeneration also look at the differential pressure and what i always find interesting is the dpf soot load fuel based and the dpf soot load time based okay and what you'll notice is is it's at 4.71 and 4.77 usually after it regens and completes a normal regen those will basically go to zero so we always look at that to kind of see what's going on with that and then also i like to look at fuel dosing inlet pressure and fuel dosing outlet pressure and then also you can tell real quick how many counts it had of incompleted regenerations and so we're going to monitor these and then i'll check back with you in just a few moments so we're back looking at these parameters 
these data points that I pulled over from the regeneration tab, okay? And we're looking at, obviously, the air throttle valve actual and desired positions. And then we're also, what's interesting to look at a lot of times is the desired DOC outlet temperature, okay? And then the DOC inlet and outlet temperatures. And I'll hone that in just a little bit so you can see those. And you can see that our DOC desired outlet temperature is right around a thousand degrees. So it really, really what we're doing is heating that exhaust system up and just kind of letting it sit there and bake once it's going into a deep clean re service regeneration, okay? And so we'll scroll down and I'll show you again this soot load, okay, this DPF, if you can see that, the DPF soot load fuel-based is at 4.65 and the DPF soot load time-based is 4.77, okay, both of those are for grams per liter and basically those will go to zero once we complete an exhaust clean and I'll show you that in a little while when we get this exhaust clean completed. The tractor just completed the exhaust clean. It took about 30 minutes to complete the exhaust clean and then if you notice the air throttle valve actual and desired position is now at 100% rather than 11%. Okay and then what's really interesting is to page down and look at the DPF soot load fuel based has went to zero. The DPF soot load time based has went to zero. Okay, those were 4.67 and 4.77 I believe. Exhaust filter cleaning request switch is now turned off. Okay, and so we have basically cleaned the exhaust system using the service regen. The soot level is now not needed because the soot level is low enough that it does not need to do a exhaust clean, okay? And uh, so, quick reminder is, is that I believe the air throttle valve code was the initial problem with the, with the engine because it did not know what position that air throttle valve was in. It was requ requesting the air throttle valve to move to a certain position, but it wasn't seeing that actual position, which in turn gave us an air throttle valve fault code and caused the tractor to not be able to initiate an auto regen during use in the field. So once again, pretty interesting information. Larry the Tractor Guy signing out. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.